Hey guys, Aileen here from Homegrown Happiness. Welcome to October's video. It's a bit later than I had um, planned it to be. I've been busy with a couple of other things. Um, I did film it over a couple of days because the weather has been a bit on and off. So I just did what I could and um, and now piecing it together. So the first thing I wanted to do was remove the netting that was covering the front lawn. Um, the things in there were getting quite big and pushing up against it. And I had put it up initially to protect it from the birds, the chickens and the blackbirds. Um, the seedlings in there aren't seedlings anymore, they're quite a bit bigger, so the blackbirds won't dig them up. And there's enough greenery now to uh, share with the chickens, or at least for now. And as you can see, the moment it's off, they're in there. Now that the netting was up, I had a look at the cabbages that were in there, the red cabbages, and they were just not forming heads. In fact, they were starting to bolt, and they'd been in there since May, so that's a lot later than I would usually plant my brassicas. And because the sun is quite limited, they were never really thriving, so I decided they can come out. Um, the mini cabbages I planted in there, they did quite well, so if I do plant cabbages again next year, with my limited sun, I am going to stick to the mini variety. So when I remove my crops, I always cut them down, I don't yank the root ball out, so I can leave the root ball to break down in the soil, because that is still a viable food source for the organisms in the soil. And now that the cabbages are gone, I'm also taking out the radishes that are in there. I've sown some more, but the big ones um, are coming out now. Um, so the red cabbages, just because they haven't formed heads, we're still going to be eating those. Some of the really manky bits are going into the compost bin, but the outer leaves and the nicer leaves, they are going to be dehydrated, and I'm going to turn those into a brassica powder, which is just brilliant to add to smoothies or breads or soups or salad dressings or whatever. It's just a way to get some extra nutrients in. We went away to the Wairarapa this weekend, and I got some plants from my husband's auntie. So she gave me some artichokes and a couple of wildflowers, some chamomile, and this is the Phacelia, that's actually mine. I was also given some more hay. So I get my hay and my horse poo from a couple that own some horses not um, far from me. And then this bale of hay they said was not appropriate for the horses anymore. I think it was left out in the rain and then it gets uh, wet. And then, it, um, yeah, they, the horses can't eat it anymore. So they ask if I want to have it. And I'm like, yes, please, because I love using hay or any kind of free mulch in my garden. So that's going to be brilliant to add to my potato patches. And then Shay's auntie also gave us this bag of mushroom compost. She gets her mushroom compost from Parkvale Mushrooms, which is in the Wairarapa, that's nice and close. And she got delivered like a small five tons worth of it and asked if I wanted a bag. So again, I'm always like, yes, please, if anyone wants to give me some free organic matter. And that stuff I'm just going to spread around the garden. And it's quite heavy, so initially I just throw it around until I could lift up the bag. Things in here are getting nice and big, but I'm still not going to plant things out just yet. It is Labour Weekend this weekend, which is traditionally when like the people in the warmer parts of New Zealand would plant out their crops. But just from past experience, it is not set that that is the last time it's going to be cold. Last year, in fact, it was like in November there was like a frost, and I remember down south they um, even had a snowstorm in um, November, which is like get yeah, crazy. So just waiting with my tomatoes and my warmer crops like that. I will probably will wait all the way until early November unless they get really big just because the mornings are still really cold and the nights are still quite cool even with beautiful days like this. I also have quite a few seedlings still inside. I've got my kumara slips growing. I have some yams. And then here are my potatoes that I have in bags and these are the purple mouldy potatoes. And they need some mulch, they're coming up quite high and I have that hay now to put on which is awesome.
coming up the stairs here I have my um, white currant bush um, I'm fairly sure it's white currant I forgot what it was from last year because I didn't get berries on it um, yeah but I think it's white currant anyway it was planted in a really shady spot so I've just put it here and it's just flourished and then coming up the stairs to the top of the garden I'm going to be planting some more potatoes uh, because I got some uh, well-priced sprouting potatoes from my local organic store and these are these summer delight uh, potatoes which I grew last year and they were all really cool so um, yeah I'm going to plant some. just in this little patch here I'm not going to spread them out too far because I want to plant other summer things there so I'm just going to do it in a quite a contained little rectangle so it's just my no dig style of um, planting potatoes make a little hollow in the soil, pop the potato in with the ice facing up and then keep covering with organic matter um, as the greens pop through just so that they don't see the sun. And then it's very important that after you've done that, that you let your chickens inspect your job to see if it's done well. And I wanted to show you this cherry tree because it has some suckers growing um, off it, which often happens with uh, fruit trees. The suckers that are sent up aren't, unfortunately, the fruiting cherry that we want. They're the rootstock that the cherry has been grafted onto. So unless you want the rootstock for something else, you probably don't want to be planting these or keeping them, especially not attached to the tree because they're taking energy away from the actual cherry tree but you can see the amazing roots that are on this sucker and they root very quickly if allowed to do so which is a positive thing when you are taking cuttings of your fruit trees like I have done and they're up in my garlic bed because I do want those to root so that I can replant those. Those are cuttings of the um, scion wood so not the grafted rootstock which is the roots that go on the ground it's cuttings off the wood that has been grafted onto the rootstock so the actual fruiting wood. And just as an example here, here is my Stella cherry, that's a sour cherry. And I took some cuttings of that and I just popped them around the cherry tree and these ones are already starting to root. So you can see those little white ridges, that's the roots that are beginning to pop through. So the day after that was filmed, the weather changed and it became really rainy, but I used that day to plant some corn that I had some seedlings of and sow some corn seed as well. So I planted the corn in this little patch here and then I sowed seeds next to that because uh, the corn, I would like to stagger the harvest. I did that last year too and that worked out really well. It does grow fairly quickly when the weather is um, really nice and warm. So if you do sow seeds consecutively for a while, then you will get a much longer corn harvest. I've also sown some beans. I like some climbing beans to go up my archways. I have a, a, a long red noodle bean as well that I've never grown before. So I'm really keen to see um, how that works out. And that's about it. So for the rest of the month, I'm going to be enjoying the warm days as they come and continuously layering organic matter onto the beds to prepare for the summer crops that are coming. So that's it for this month's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.